In this video, I want to finish our discussion of partial fraction decomposition by taking a look at quadratic factors. So in the first video, we looked at examples where each rational expression had distinct linear factors for its denominator. In the second video, we looked at examples where each rational expression had repeated linear factors in its denominator. So here in the third and final video of this set, we are going to take a look at two rational expression examples whose denominators will factor down into linear and irreducible quadratic factors. Okay, so when the denominator has a linear factor, the numerator we assign to it uh, for its partial fraction is merely a constant. So the big thing here is that when we have a quadratic factor, the partial fraction numerator will end up being a linear factor on its own, so like ax plus b. So any quadratic repeated factors will be treated exactly the same way that linear repeated factors were. Okay, so let's get down to an example. So here I have this rational expression, 7x squared minus 6x plus 32 for the numerator, and then I have this denominator here, x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 16. Okay, so the first thing to do is to factor this denominator, and it looks like this will factor nicely by grouping. Okay, so let's go ahead and take an x squared out of the first one, and I'll get an x minus 4, and let's take a plus 4 out, and I'll be left with another x minus 4. And of course, since my leftovers here and here are the same, I know that I can use grouping. So this denominator will end up being x squared plus 4 with x minus 4, okay? So you'll notice this x squared plus 4 is the sum of squares, so this is actually an irreducible quadratic factor, because this will not factor down anymore using real numbers, okay? So let's go ahead and set that up as my first one, x squared plus 4. And my second one will be x minus 4. Okay? So this one um, is just linear, so his numerator will be just a constant. We'll get to him in a second, though. So this first one is quadratic. So we just got done saying that when it's quadratic for the denominator, its numerator needs to essentially be one degree less. So it needs to be linear. So I'm going to put ax plus b. Okay, because this needs to be linear in and of itself. And then one degree less than the linear would be just the constant. Okay. Okay, so now when I know that my common denominator is this x squared plus 4 with this x minus 4. Okay, well, here's one of them. And here's the other one of them. So this ax plus b in the numerator, okay, what is that denominator missing? What do we need to multiply him by? Well, that's the x minus 4. And over here, this plus c, what's this fraction missing? Well, he's missing the x squared plus 4. And then, of course, that equals the 7x squared minus 6x plus 32 from the uh, original rational expressions numerator. Okay, so we'll see if we can squeeze all this in. It'll be really close here. Okay, so we need to start plugging in values of x to start eliminating some of these terms over here. I think the first one and easiest one is this x minus 4. So let's use positive 4 for x first. Okay, so positive 4 for x, and we'll just kind of work our way over. So what I have here is 4a plus b times 4 minus 4, okay, that's nice, plus c, so 4 squared is 16 plus 4, and then we've got uh, 4 squared is 16 again, minus 6 times 4 plus 32, okay? Well, this 4 minus 4 is 0, so that whole thing went away, which was nice, that was kind of the point of that. So this becomes 20c equals, let's see, 7 times 16 should be, what, 112 uh, minus 24 plus 32 should give me 120. So that means c equals 6. Okay, well, we got one of them knocked out of the way pretty quickly. But we have a problem. So looking back at this original one, 
Okay. What else can we plug in for x to get rid of something? Well, I can't plug anything in for x squared plus 4 to get rid of it because it was an irreducible um, prime factor. So nothing can I plug in will give me 0 here. Alrighty, so at this point I just need to choose values of x then. So probably the next best value of x is, well, 0 itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug 0 in for all the x's up here. So I have uh, a times 0 plus b, and then 0 minus 4, plus c, 0 plus 4, equals, well, 7 times 0 minus 6 times 0 plus 32. And of course, we've got a lot of stuff that cancels now. So that a and the 0 will cancel, that'll cancel, that'll cancel. So essentially, I have negative 4b. I know my c is 6, actually, so that's 6 times 4 is 24, equals 32. So subtracting 24 from both sides gives me a 8, so b must equal negative 2. Okay, so I have two of my three values. I have my b, which is negative 2. I have my c, which is 6. So now I just need to finish and uh, get my value for my a here. Okay, well, what other value could I use for x to kind of get some stuff figured out? Well, another one that's probably easy is x equals 1. So let's put an x equal 1 here. And then I know my equation's way up here, so you'll just have to trust me when I rewrite some things down here. So I'm plugging 1 in for x. So I'm going to have a times 1 plus b, and then 1 minus 4 plus c, 1 plus 4, equals 7 times 1 minus 6 times 1 plus 32. Okay? So we know a couple of these values already. We know that this will be a, and then b is negative 2, so minus 2 times a negative 3. c was 6 times 5 equals 7 minus 6 plus 32. Okay, so it looks like I'm left with just an a now, so it's just kind of a matter of solving this. So I'm going to back distribute negative 3a plus 6 plus 30, and then 7 minus 6 is 1, so 33. So negative 3a plus 36 equals 33. Negative 3a equals negative 3 when I subtract 36 from both sides. Hey, a equals 1. That came out pretty nicely, didn't it? Alrighty, so back way to the top here. I had ax plus b over my x squared plus 4, and then I had plus c over my x minus 4, and that was my partial fraction decomposition for this original rational expression. So let's go ahead and write it out in its entirety. So I am going to say 7x squared minus 6x plus 32 all over this denominator, which was x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 16 equaled ax plus b, so x minus 2 over x squared plus 4, and then plus 6 over x minus 4. Okay, so we have completed this partial fraction decomposition, and this was the first example that we've looked at that actually included a quadratic in the denominator. Okay, let's go ahead and tackle this last example. So our rational expression is 24 for the numerator, and then we have this denominator of x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 8x plus 16. So again, I notice that I probably can use factor by grouping here to get going. So the first thing to do, factor the denominator. So I can take an x cubed out, and I'm left with x plus 2. And then it looks like I can take a positive 8 out, and I'm left with x plus 2. Okay, so this will end up being x cubed plus 8 times x plus 2. Okay, well here I notice that x cubed plus 8 is actually uh, the sum of cubes. So the sum of cubes says that the cube root of each of these, so x plus 2, 
and then the first one squared minus their product plus the second one squared and then x plus 2. So it looks like I have an irreducible quadratic here but I have x plus 2 squared for my other one. So this will be my fully factored denominator. Okay. So let's say equals. Okay, so how will I go about doing this? Well, let's go ahead and do my quadratic denominator first. So he's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 4. And again, what will go in the numerator? Well, I need a linear because it's one degree less. So I'm going to put ax plus b. And then I have repeated here. So the m value, we talked about that in the last video, is 2. So I'll need to write two separate fractions. One of these where x plus 2 is the first. And one of these where x plus 2 is squared. Okay, and then I just need constants up here. So I've used A and B, so let's say C and D. Okay, so this problem is going to get a little bit out of hand. And that's okay, though. We'll work it slowly, and um, yeah, we'll eventually get to the end. Okay, so we need to work these common denominators. So we have the right here. We know the common denominator is this guy. So which part or which factor of the denominator is this one missing? Well, we have ax plus b. This one's missing the x plus 2 squared. And then I have plus c. Which one's this missing? Well, it has one of the x plus 2s, but he's missing the quadratic term and the other x plus 2. So let me put the other x plus 2 first, and then I'll put the quadratic that he's missing. Okay, and how about what's this guy missing? Well, he's got both of the linear factors. So he just need the, uh, the quadratic factor in there. Okay, and then all of that, of course, equals 24, which was our numerator over here. All righty. So again, it's going to stretch beyond the scope of what the camera can pick up, but it is what it is. So the first one is x plus 2. I know that uh, if I use x equals negative 2, that I can get rid of some stuff. Okay, so if I plug in negative 2 from all my x's, I know this will be 0, so this whole thing cancels out to begin with. And here's another x plus 2, so this whole thing cancels out. Okay, so really I can ignore all that first bit, and I just have the d, so it's d times, so x squared, so 4 plus 4 plus 4 equals 24. So 12d equals 24. So d equals 2. Okay, no fear. That was pretty quick and painless. All right. So we need to try another one now. And it looks like because uh, x plus 2 is my only linear factors, and this is an irreducible quadratic. I know there's nothing I can plug in here that's real that will give me a zero. So let's just try, in fact, plugging in zero for x. Okay, so here we go. So zero for x means the a gets uh, eliminated there, but I do have the b, and zero for x means two squared is four, plus c, zero for the x, times 0, 0, and I have a 4, plus 2 for the D, 0, 0, 4, equals 24. Okay, this doesn't look awful. So 4B plus 8C equals, so 2 times 4 is 8. We're going to move it over there, though, so that equals 16. Okay, and I can actually factor a 4 out of everything. Or I'm just divide a 4 from both sides, actually. So b plus 2c equals 4. Okay, I'm going to put an asterisk next to that. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and block it a different color so I can find it later on. Okay, he's important. So right now, I've not isolated him down to just a single variable, but I do have at least an equation that will relate two of them together. So maybe if I can pull a, another one of those, then I'll be good to go. 
Okay, so we have used negative 2 for x, and we've used 0 for x. Um, no other values that look really nice automatically, so let's just try 1. So x equals 1. Okay. And we're going to plug 1 into this equation right here. And again, kind of hard to see, so you just have to trust me. So x equals 1. So uh, a times 1 plus b and then 1 plus 2 is 3, squared is 9, plus c, 1 plus 2 is 3, and then 1 minus 2 plus 4, and then d is 2, 1 minus 2 plus 4 equals 24. Okay, so let's back distribute here. So I have a 9a plus a 9b, uh, this thing ends up being 3, 3 times 3, plus a 9c, and if that was 3 also, plus 6 equals 24. So 9a plus 9b plus 9c equals 18. Uh, I could simplify this by dividing 9 from both sides. So it looks like a plus b plus c equals 2. Put a little asterisk next to that. And I'm going to box that in another color, because I need to come back to that later on. So it looks like, where I was a little bit hopeful that I had a single equation with only two variables, maybe if I got another one of those, then I could just do my system directly. But what I ended up with was an A and a B and a C. Okay, so three unknowns, two equations. i got to do it one more time. So let's find another value of x, work the whole thing out, and then I'll have a nice system that I can solve. Okay, so let's go ahead and do positive 2 for x. Okay, so same situation. Um, my equation's way up here, so we'll just kind of work it. So I'm plugging in a 2. Okay, so a times 2 for x plus b, and then 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16, plus c, 2 plus 2 is 4. When I plug 2 in to my little quadratic, it's 4 minus 4 is 0, plus 4. d is 2, have a 4 right there, and that equals 24. So, back distribute. 32a plus 16b plus 16c plus 8 equals 24. 32a plus 16b plus 16c equals 16. So it looks like I can divide a 16 out of everything to make my life a little nicer. So 2a plus b plus c equals 1. And I'm going to put an asterisk next to that, and I'm going to box it in blue. All right, so what I have here is now a system of three equations with three unknowns, a b and a c, a, b, c, a, b, c. What I could do is look at this first one, and I could say b equals 4 minus 2c, and then I could substitute that into the other two equations, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's just, uh, I'll show you. So b equals, so it's 4 minus 2c, okay? So if that's the case now, this second equation turns into a plus b, which is 4 minus 2c, plus c equals 2. So a minus c equals negative 2, because I subtracted 4 from both sides and I combined the c's. Okay, well let's do the same thing for this equation. So I have 2a plus b, but b of course was 4 minus 2c plus c equals 1. So 2a minus c equals, well, negative 3, okay? So I have this equation and this equation. Hey, a system with two equations and two unknowns, okay? So I'm going to change back to uh, the black now. So a minus c equal negative 2. 2a minus c equal negative 3. So let's go ahead and change the sign of everything. Negative, positive, positive. Add them up. The C's cancel. Negative A equals 1. A equals negative 1. Okay. So if I know that A is negative 1, now I can just start back substituting everything. 
So 2 times negative 1 minus c equals negative 3. Okay. c equals 1. Okay. And if that's the case, uh, let's go ahead and plug it way back into the b equaled 4 minus 2c. And so... Oh yeah, way, way over here. So plug it back into the b equals 4 minus 2c. So 4 minus 2 times 1. 4 minus 2. b equals 2. All right. So we're almost done. We just need to write now our completed partial fraction decomposition sum. Okay. So I know from the beginning that I had ax b plus b over my quadratic, and then I had c and then d. Okay, so that's what that looked like. So let's go ahead and plug all my values in. So a was negative 1, so I have, okay, negative x, and then b was 2, so plus 2 over. But you know what? I don't really like leading with a negative right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch that to a 2 minus x, just to put that negative in the middle there. So over x squared minus 2x plus 4. My c was 1, so plus 1 over x plus 2. And then my d was somewhere 2, right? So plus 2 over x plus 2 squared. All righty. Sorry, I'm not even sure you could see any of that. So 2 minus x uh, over this irreducible quadratic factor, and then plus 1 over x plus 2, and then plus 2 over x plus 2 quantity squared. So right here is now the, uh, the partial fraction decomposition for this initial, way up here, right, rational expression.